is supposed to be payable. Let it be paid. This idea, I remember I, I, I've been an accountant at the University of Nairobi, and during our time as a speaker, what, what used to happen is you'd prepare checks. You know, there was cash flow problems. You'd prepare checks and put them in a drawer, many of them, a bundle. And so people come, and there was a, a, a big uh, a black book where, which was called check register. So the suppliers come, and uh, checks are issued through that register. So depending on how nice you talk to the accounts department, then your check is released. Yet the one for horrible speaker even goes stale after six months. Those are things that we can cure through a system where you have an accounting system which allows payments to be made on first come, first served basis. Thank you. Finally, uh, Honorable Jeanette asked me a question I didn't expect to come from him, but I expected to come. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I've been asked about bottom up. Bottom up economic transformation agenda. That is how it is called. Let me tell you, let me, uh, uh, through you, Mr. Speaker, tell Honorable Jeanette this that bottom up is actually a concept of uh, UDA, read Kenya Kwanza. But I want to tell him that if you look at the philosophy of UDA and ODM, there is no difference. <laughs> Actually, the two are social democrats. Yes. The two mm -hmm. political parties promote social democracy. But let me leave that for that. Look at better. What is it all about? Mm -hmm. It talks about job creation. It talks about cost of living. It talks about agricultural productivity. It talks about digital economy. What about ODM? What was in our manifesto? We talked about the same. Actually, the better concept is on value addition. Now ODM manifesto, which I participated <coughs> in drafting, we had manufacturing emphasizing on agriculture as raw material. So it is manufacturing supported by agriculture. Did you read Animal Farm? I, I read it some time back, Mr. Yes. But now better is on value addition. Yes. For, for agriculture for value addition. ODM, agriculture for manufacturing. Semantics. Housing. But again, finally, yes. Mr. Speaker, uh, housing was our concept, both of us. But finally, Mr. Speaker, there is the Constitution and the PFM Act, which will guide my uh, conduct in office if approved. Thank you. Naisula, if, yes. Uh, uh, if you allow me, Honorable Speaker, just a supplementary on uh, one of the things John Buddy said uh, around uh, working with the National Treasury and uh, your work as a member of Parliament, the abuse of Article 223. Yes. And uh, you know, since we were both in the Budget Committee, this has been a huge problem. And it continues to date. You've had in the recent past very senior government officers trying to arm twist people in the national treasury to pay uh, even confidential expenditure out of uh, Article 223. I don't want to hear what you intend to do to now stem from uh, the, the, the root cause uh, or, or, or where this problem emanates from the national treasury, abuse of Article 223. Lastly, when you spoke about the good things that we lost in the finance bill, you may or you may not agree with me that partially the problem was out of very poor communication by the National Treasury. Kenyans out there were left to just listen to what was being said by members of parliament during debates on the finance bill to know what were the good things in that finance bill. How differently will you now uh, at the helm of the National Treasury, if approved by this committee, will you communicate to Kenyans to be able to know that uh, a finance bill, as you said, is an omnibus bill. It has very many good things for the benefit of the country which get lost uh, in the misinformation and disinformation campaign that was there with the last one. Uh, so my question is, how will you uh, uh, shift the communication from the National Treasury 
and with all respect to those who were there before, uh, there was literally no communication coming from the National Treasury. Uh, how do you intend to change that? And I agree with you on uh, the pending bills, but uh, also tell you that uh, probably what you also need to do is look at the procurement. For instance, and you've been a member of parliament all these years, CDF. There are never any pending bills in CDF because of the system through which we procure. You only procure when you have exchequer with you. So probably as, uh, as you, if you get approved, that's one of the other things you need to look at, uh, to remodel whatever is being done in mainstream government with CDF. Mr. Speaker, I'll go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Speaker. To the nominee, Honorable Bombardi, you are on record in Parliament during debate of um, the last approval of the Cabinet uh, Secretaries, and it is, uh, it's gone viral, widely known, that you referred to the Cabinet Secretaries then as skunks. Now you find yourself as one of the nominees are you a skunk or are you not? The second question is that uh, we have advisors who I'm reliably informed sit at State House who advise the President on matters economy. You will be seated at Treasury. I would like to know between if this committee and the National Assembly approves you you will have your opinion, they will have their opinion. How do you marry the two to make sure that you're talking the same? Because we have seen in the public some of the advisors talking like they're not in the same government, like I, you know, the way how they, they, they work. So I would like to know whether, which supersedes the other, or, and how will you make sure that you work together in, on matters economy and as you advise the president? Finally, there's been allegations that in Treasury, we have people who've been there for so long, change, times have changed, you're seeing we are in very extraordinary times, we need to think extraordinary to get our country to where we want to be. How do we make sure once you're there? You are not held captive, because we have seen other CSAs with very good credentials, even you. If approved, I don't know what happens when you go there. I don't know whether it is the system, you become captives of IMF, you become captives of what is going on. What will you do differently? Because we are in very extraordinary times, uh, Mr. Nominee. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, allow me to, in response to the questions by leader majority, to start with the pending bills on. In fact, Mr. Speaker had a lot to say, uh, but I limit, because of limitation of time, I left out something on uh, the issue of pricing and general procurement and supply chain management. That is an area that we must address. It is what we would call addressing corruption. Mr. Speaker, if you were to buy your manor in Kisumu and buy it in Kericho, despite even the transport costs, you are almost buying it at the same price. But in the same government building, same government building, fifth floor, tenth floor, buying the same item at different prices. We cannot continue like that as a 